Hi, welcome back to Wild Speculations. I'm Daniel. I'm Scott. This week we talk about Critical Role Campaign 2, Episode 102, Ghost Dinosaurs and Stuff. Yep. One of the rare moments in the episode where the title is decided. Um, boy, did we have a lot wrong, but also a few things right. Yeah. Uh, there were a couple, well, yeah. there were a couple moments when Matt was describing what they were seeing up in the stalactites where I was like, okay, he's saying what he's seeing on the, the gold on the ground he's seeing up there. Well, that could be a dragon scale. Uh, and just as, as that scene just went on longer, I was like, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> the only solace I took was that it's also not a war. Uh, or uh, No, pretty sure it is a war god. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. At this point, I, I think the people who brought that up are right. I think it's going to be souped up, like I said, because I, I, there's no way it could be without it being souped up. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, it fits a more cost. Even with the fire and... That's part of the souped up part. Okay. Because I have a new theory on what it is. Okay. Um... Because I was convinced that it was not oh. a Morkov. I think it is a creature that Matt generated. Mm. Um, I think he probably took those powers from the Morkov. Okay. And sprinkled it in, because that's narratively what he needed it to do. Right. Um, but, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's 100% possible. Um, Either... Well, either way, it's a homebrew creature. He either took the Morkoth and and as the bare bones and put other stuff on, or he took a village from the Morkoth that's wrinkled onto whatever it is. Yeah. Um, well, I have a feeling this thing's made of whole, from whole cloth. I don't think this is reskinned anything. Okay. Um, but, yeah. We talked about how the Bodak wasn't going to be a threat. Right. And... Immediately, I was like, whoop! Yeah, I forgot about that caveat if you fail to save by fire or war. But mostly, I had discounted that because... Of how high, especially a monk. Yeah. That's and, proficient in all their saves, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I did. But that does show the, the great thing that you can do with those kind of creatures, those kinds of abilities, where it's... It can still threaten higher level parties if the if the dice go bad. Yeah. Um, because it wasn't going to be a party wipe by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, no. Um. In fact, the they didn't attack it for half their actions. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But they did use a lot of resources in that fight. Yeah. Um, Jester used Channel Divinity and a fourth level spell. Mm -hmm. And then Ford used Lay on Hands. Yep. Three hit points by the time it was all over. Um, and they, by the end of it, they had used four third level spells between them. Yeah. We had a Haste, um, Bless. At third level, mm -hmm. and a healing word and a cure wounds. Yep. Uh, and then when they took their rest, I think I counted Travis rolling four or five dice. Wow. Which means he was rolling pretty low, because his con mod is four, I think. Yep. Uh, and he's got the eighteen con. Yeah. So to have to keep rolling to only. He only took 40... Well, no, I guess he did take over 50 damage. But still. Um, yeah. And then, of course, Bo basically had to fill up yeah. her hit points with hit dice on her rest. Um, 
We got to see a new spell. Yes. Cantrip. Or do you think it's a first level spell? I think it's a first level. Okay. Yeah, I was. I'm torn. Because part of me thinks it's a cantrip. What was the damage on it again? Because I think it was too much damage to be a cantrip. Not if it's a d6. If it starts at a d6, I think the damage was 8. 8 or 9. So it was more than... No. It was 13, because it was more than 2d6 to do. But less than 3d6, which is what their cantrips are at. They're at 3 dice mm. right now. Okay. Um... And otherwise, I, a bonus action, 3 or 4d6, a first level spell. I think it's, I don't know. I don't know. I thought it, the way I thought it was going down was that, uh, the attack was part of the spell. I could see that. But if that was the case, then she had a bonus action to shoot again, and she didn't. That's why I think it's a bonus action okay. spell, because she didn't fire again. And see, to me, that makes it even less likely that it's a cantrip. Because if a cantrip is going to mess with your attacks, you know, why isn't True Strike a bonus action? It's true. But it's a homebrew spell, and it's the first one Sam's ever yeah. done. And... Yeah, I don't know. But you might be right. It might be as part of the casting of the spell making attack, like Green yeah. Flame Blade or Booming Blade. Right. Only this is a ranged attack. Um, I could see that. And Sam just didn't fire again because he was excited about casting the spell. Yeah. And having done 40 something damage. Mm hmm. Well, I think a Bodak has lightning damage. Yes, it does. Yeah. No. I thought it was immune to lightning damage. Well, the wisps are. But I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it's resistant to cold and lightning. Uh, necrotic. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, and, and Bo's key point. Yep. Uh, and then a level 5 uh, Banishing Smite, which in the moment I was like, we can't cast 5th level Paladin spells. And then I realized it's probably, I was like, oh wait, it's probably a Hexblade spell. Expanded list, yep. Yeah. Um, just because that is one thing that D&D Beyond is good for. Mm. is constraining you to only legal choices. Yeah. Um, but, man. I still want to see him pull out Compelled Duel. By far my favorite Paladin spell. It, well, if he was going to do it, the turtle was the time to do it. Yeah. Or maybe when they fight Bukoto. Yeah. Because they're going to fight Bukoto. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Yabo. Is that the, the ship name for Bo and Yasha? Uh, where Bo asked Yasha to carry her. She does. Yes. And they were making jokes and trying to make Bo look ridiculous or something. And Ashley was like, no, no, I want the art to look cool. <laughs> 
Yes, that was good. Uh, oh, I kind of felt bad for Matt because he was forgetting all of the things that the Bodak does. Hmm. Uh, you know, uh, the aura yep. that it has uh, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and he didn't back up to do it. Well, in the, except in the sense, he, well, he made, he narratively made it after she hit it that it, this went up. But I mean, to be fair, it does have to turn on the aura. It's not a constant thing. Mm. Uh, but I love Jester filming. Yeah. <laughs> the. Uh, The carry. Um, and I I was very happy when Matt said, Yasha, make a perception check. And Ashley was like, okay, I was going to ask. Yep. I think Bo should have had disadvantage mm -hmm. on her sleight of hand check. But. Uh, or give Yasha an advantage on the perception check. But it it's it's more likely for Yasha to succeed. Well, I don't know. It's kinda of hard because her wisdom check is so Yeah. Her score is so low. And she rolled pretty well on the perception check, so it's like uh, but she doesn't know that Jester and Bo are gossiping <laughs> behind her back, literally. Uh, and we also got more Forrester. Yeah. I, I don't know. It, it just... Like... Yes, it was a moment between Ford and Jester, but it didn't feel like a moment to me. I don't know. I, I think Laura has an angle. I don't know what that angle is just yet, but I think she has an angle that she's working on. I would not be surprised by that, but it just seems more and more the Forrester scenes are just less and less real, you know? There, there's no sexual charge in them? There, there, yeah, no, no charge of any kind, really. Yeah, that's fair. Um, it reads more like just two party members helping each other out than a burgeoning relationship. At this point, to me. Fair. Um, and I made this joke with you while we were eating, but yes. Caduceus gets the Jordy LaForge treatment. Yes. Continues to. Continues, yes. Yeah, because, yeah, I was like, the island is not like Caduceus. <laughs> At every turn, he's failing a save here and there, and it's just. It also doesn't help that the two party members who also went into the tar pits had nothing happen to them. Yeah. And um, of course, you have Jester in her. Just step out. In, in her perceived rivalries. <laughs> why, why did you have such a hard time, man? Just, you know. There's also a question of whether or not there's any perceptible difference between Yasha healing hands and Ford's lay on hands. Mm. Like from an out from Knot's point of view. Yeah. Cannot really say which one is better or worse. Yeah. Uh I mean, I suppose you can say 
there's a a palpable difference perhaps in how much vigor is returned yeah but yeah i don't know i so well that moment was kind of funny and fun uh yeah i kind of it took me out a little bit where i was like not not gonna know that uh especially because her wisdom isn't very good either right uh, so yeah they have their rest yeah, caduceus rest. ritual in in theory he ritually casts commune mm -hmm. uh, it's a ritual you don't spend the spell slot if you don't need to right um to sort of shred one of my theories from last week. Okay. Which was, is Vokodo the cause of the memory loss? Because much of my theory last week was predicated on the notion that Vokodo and its powers are independent of whatever is causing the memory loss. Mm. Yeah. And with Caduceus's commune, that basically shatters that idea. Yeah. Except the way Matt answered it, there's a small sliver of possibility. But I I basically am like, okay, yeah, it's not it's yeah. whatever this thing's doing. No, I think it's gonna come I think it's gonna come down to whether it is a souped up Morkoth or something else that just took the Morkoth. It is gonna be exactly the Morkoth. The more caught this, or the creature, those causing it, as soon as they kill Vokodo, everyone's memories will return. Hmm. I kind of hope that's not the case. But it would also make sense. Because uh, I think that's probably, you're probably right, and that's probably how Matt expected the reveal yeah. of Vilya to happen. Yes. Um, oh my gosh, that was great. Yeah. We'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, but they avert a T-Rex fight. Yes. By quick thinking from Caleb and Caduceus. Major image to project a forest mm -hmm. and Caduceus using thaumaturgy to make the sound of someone moving over there. Um, How long before they polymorph it, someone or themselves into a T Rex? Immediately? <laughs> uh, Who does it first, Caleb or Jester? Uh, Jester. And I say that only because Caleb sort of tipped his hand, but he doesn't have polymorph prepared yeah uh, his one t his one usage today was his class ability uh, well to be fair at the end of the episode they were prepping for a long rest yes which means free preparing of spells yes but it's a I believe it's a uh, domain spell for gesture isn't it yes yeah, so she has it prepared no matter what. And Caleb can do it once no matter what. Right. Um, and only on himself. Right. Uh, but I can see Jester casting it on herself to become the T-Rex. I can see Jester casting it on herself. I don't see Caleb doing that. I see Caleb casting it on someone else. Yeah. Because Caleb does not want to go to a two intelligence. He is specifically... Tried to stay yeah. away from the. He's gone to the to the giant ape as his war form. Yeah. And because it can still understand language. Yeah. Um. And Liam is basically stated as such. So. Yeah, but I mean. Yeah, and he has made mention of. I'm looking at the intelligence of these things because I want to turn into something with too low of an intelligence. Yeah. 
But the other side of that coin is it's a freaking T-Rex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if you can keep your intelligence and then turn someone I have a feeling who it's going to have who it's going to need to be. But again, we're I'm thinking it'll that. either end up being Ford or not. Ford. Yeah, for a very specific reason. Okay. Uh which I guess we can talk about that now, because that's basically the next thing that happens. Uh, they get to the entrance, and an interesting uh, mechanic in holding of the breath. Yeah. Um, and if you fail the deck save, you lose two minutes of air. Um, interestingly enough, and a part of me wonders if he designed the encounter during campaign one. Mm. Because that would have been a much bigger problem for Vox Machina. Yes. Because their con scores were not nearly as good as this group. Right. Where this group, Ford failed twice and still didn't yeah. take anything. And Caduceus failed twice and got poisoned once. Um, so... But I could have seen uh, Keyleth failing both. Um, Vexalia, if she failed the deck save, uh, failing the con save. Yeah. Grog would have been fine. Pike would have been fine. You can see Percy failing. If he failed the deck save, yeah, failing the contact. I can um, see Scanlan. Yeah, on both ends. Yeah, both, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was that. That was a much bigger threat for Vox Machina than the Lion Nine. Yeah. Um, also, the duration of the poisoned condition was significant. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, oh wow. Um, but they get into Vakoto's chamber mm -hmm. and they start their negotiation. Start small, here's a diamond. Vakoto is pleased. Here's a couple rings. And I love, you're going to make it eat out of your hand? She's like, yep. It's like, it's not the first time, but it's, <laughs> it could go wrong again. Not gonna be the first uh, first time, uh, and it quickly devolves into yeah, that's not enough. Yeah, and Ford offers up the Star Razor, and I laughed at that moment because as it comes down. And Matt describes the the hoard of treasure on its back. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking of uh, I'm blanking on the name. The turtle or the crab in Moana. In Moana. Yeah. And I kept waiting for someone to break out. I'm shiny, but no one did. Um, and no one bothered. Also, at to at well, Jester did ask. Do I see anything other than coins up there? But she failed the perception check. Yeah. But you know, there's a. But now he really does have a sword. <laughs> well. There. Uh. That that's also a question. Yeah, and I'm interested to see what happens the first time Ford. Well, tries to here's the it. thing: if it's more than five feet away from him for a minute, it's supposed to go into its pocket dimension. Where he can summon it from. Yes, if it's still attuned to him. Yeah, it's it's a question of whether the handing over could break the attunement. Can break the the, the pack, yeah, because it is an actual magic weapon. It's not just his packed blade. It's mm -hmm. he's attached that to an actual. Um, in which case, he can still summon a sword. It's just going to be created out of the pack. 
Because it doesn't have to be an actual magical weapon. You can just create a weapon as the Pact Blade. Don't you have to go through a ritual to do that, though? Mm -hmm. You have to go through a ritual to, to, bond, a to a bond and magical item to make that your Pact Weapon that okay. you summon. But at this point, if it takes away that the uh, Star Razor, he can create any melee weapon. Yeah. Uh, so he can create a halberd. He can create, you know, all this stuff, and is proficient with it. You know, a great sword, whatever. Yeah. Um, well, but it's, unless he has, he has to have greater pack weapon to do the great sword, because it can't be heavy or two handed. Oh, that's right. And then with if he does have the improved pack weapon, he can also do a ranged weapon like yeah. a longbow or something. Yeah. Um, Which I don't think he has. He's, I don't believe he has. It. He's counting on Matt to be giving out magic weapons. Yeah. Which Matt obliges. Um, but he can still create a falchion. He can create, you know. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that. But that's why I was saying that Ford's the more likely target for Polymorph. Yeah. Because he may not. Like the first time he tries to summon the Star Razor, Matt might say nothing happens. Yeah. Rather than. The Star Razor doesn't appear, but a Falchion does. Yeah, um, I'm curious as to how he would, how that would logistically work where nothing comes, because that would mean he still has the attunement to it, but it didn't disappear to its pocket dimension. Well, no, if he lost his attunement to the blade, then it's there. He can't. Summon. Right, but when he summons the sword. It should pop up as whatever this packed weapon is, because he's been saying I summon Star Razor or I summon, you know, Summer Stance, but he's not actually summoning the specific sword. He's only summoning it because it's his packed weapon. You're also not raw. There's no way for you to lose your magic powers as a warlock, but Matt did right. So. No, right. But I mean, what I'm saying is he's not necessarily when he says I summon Star Razor, he's saying that because that's his pack weapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not actually. But that's why I say I, I don't think it's outside of the realm of possibility that Matt says right. nothing comes. Yeah. And then Travis freaks out because that was his game. Yeah, he was trying that, to game that's the code. Counting on. Yeah. No, See, if he said, I, I tried to, to summon a blade, yeah, then or my blade, yeah. Um, what I would like to see actually is it does disappear, because if this is based on the Morkoth, it automatically knows when something is left its sword. Yeah, and if he's everywhere on the island, that's just his heart. In the middle of them prepping to fight Makoto, hey, um, you took something of mine. <laughs> Start the fight before they finish their preparations. Yes. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why they asked if Bokoto has ever left. Yeah. But I don't think anyone's ever taken anything from Bokoto. Um, so. Well, do you think then we could see a mid-rest attack? It's possible. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to be a mid-rest attack. I think he's going to let them get their rest. Um, if we're going to move into the speculation real quick, I think the first half of the show is going to be a planning episode. And the second half of the show, depending on what plan they came up with, my gut says it's probably going to be exploring some other part of the island, either A, to find an item that will help them against Bokoto, or B, find another ally that will help them against Bokoto. And then the following episode will be the actual Bokoto showdown. Unless Bokoto interrupts them in planning. I, well... If it disappears right away, and if it knows where it is, uh, it will attack them immediately, and it will come from underground. Right. So the dome is not going to save them. 
if it doesn't come right away. They will have a fight if Vokodo indeed does control creatures on the island. Mm -hmm. uh, they will have a fight continuously. Uh, Vila also could ask them or could put in their heads, look, if we kill it, then, if, and if you're right, and killing it cures everybody, uh, then that could be what she does. Well, two things. One, I'm pretty sure Caleb's already, like, he's dead. We're killing him. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, two, he pulled, he, his, his key line was, I look at the ground and I do calculations. Yeah. I'm doing math. I look at the ground from the 30 seconds. I pull the thing and offer it. When he grabbed and pulled it off, he already decided we're killing this fucking thing. Yep. Um, that that was my conclusion as well. Yeah. Um, but Vila... Well, when she... when well, it's, it's time to talk. Um, yeah. When she gets her memories back, she says he has to be stopped. So she's on board. She's going to be fighting with him. So they've got a high-level druid on their team at this yeah. point. Yeah. So. Uh, that could fail a save. And... True. Um, but, speaking of the reveal... Which was the the best part of that episode. Yes. Uh, and I kept getting pulled away by work or family obligations. And I didn't watch the... You didn't get to see the end of this show until my re, my second rewatch today. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my gosh. So, so happy. I, I loved Travis's kickback from the table. What? I loved uh, Sam. And who's that? Come on, guys. Put it together. And then he revealed that he was watching chat to see who was watching at the end of the night. Which and we talked about their filming schedule mm -hmm. and what it might be. And we were assuming that they were filming during the day to potentially stop a curfew from affecting right. the filming. Um but what that tells me and what I said to you was that they're probably filming one to two weeks ahead and at the normal time. Yep. Uh, and he was probably watching either the chat from episode 100 at that point or possibly 101. I think it's going to be two weeks. I think they need two weeks at least just to keep it. Well, I mean, you knew right away at the end of episode 100. Yes. That it was probably Billion. That, and that's why I said probably episode 100. Yeah. Because um, I'm sure other people, you know, yeah, came to that conclusion. Um, again, I, I didn't watch 100 live. But I'm sure that, you know. Yeah. Um, and on my rewatch, I'm usually not looking at chat too much. Yeah. I usually look at chat when I'm watching, when I get the chance to watch live. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, so I'm assuming that was during episode 100 airing is when they were playing that. Yeah. Uh, and it kind of makes sense that they would record at the regular time because that is the time that they have in their schedule. Yeah, that they've got blocked out in their schedule anyway. Yeah. Or had. And, and it's also possible that because they are a media company, that that is the contractual time. Yeah. Um, well, and then it, it also makes sense because if the stuff gets lifted and they go back to live filming, it doesn't, it doesn't interrupt any other jobs that they have on the side because they're already saying, hey, this is the time I need off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so I can schedule this and around this Thursday night thing. Right. Um, but yeah, so uh, they freak out. That was great. Yes. And Matt said, I've had this planned 
since campaign one. Yep. I've been sitting on this since campaign one began. Uh, and they're like, what? And even the moment that you can pinpoint the moment that Sam was reading chat. Mm -hmm. Because he, his eyes kind of go big and then he sends a message to Liam and they sort of Liam reads his phone, they look back and forth, and you hear Sam very quietly say, it's a long game. Yep. Yeah. And then it's Liam's turn, and he's like, oh, sorry, I was distracted with something. <laughs> yep. And, uh, yeah, and I love the fact that he's like, you know, we can't whisper, I texted you ten minutes ago to tell you it was your mom, but you didn't look at your phone. <laughs> and she looks, and her eyes just go... Why the saucer? Yeah. I love Marisha's. My mom? My mom? Wait, what? Wait, what? you what? would not do this to me. He's been sitting on that for seven years living with her. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I didn't think about that long game. Yes, that that, that long. Wow! If he, if he had that, if he's From been the sitting on that since yeah. the beginning of campaign one, he's been sitting on that for seven years. Hmm. Which, I mean, lends more evidence to my uh, nexus. Yeah. Theory. Um, question. Does this reveal set up the Kickstarter stretch goal of the Vox Machina Mighty Nine crossover one shot? Yeah. Where they help Vila get back to her home and meet Keelan and And here's the other question. Now, Keyleth, if you go back and watch campaign one, first time she's talked to about Melora, she says, why should I believe in her? She ends up with the staff that is the vestige of uh -huh. Melora. Yeah. And says, I will keep it for now, but one day I will give it back to your followers. Caduceus getting it? Caduceus. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She and made she that was statement totally given in up for her mother. One before they knew Caduceus would even be in play, before anyone knew that anyone was going to be following the Wild Mother. <laughs> oh, this is, it's only going to make uh, Talus and be like, "See, it's all faded. It's all written. There's a plan." <laughs> In in abs in direct opposition to the traveler's point of view. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, man. But I could totally see Keyleth giving it to Caduceus mm -hmm. as a reward for bringing her mother back. Yep. And and she did make the vow that she would return it to the followers of the Wild Mother. <sighs> Is Matt prepared for that? Probably. Is Marisha prepared for that? No. <laughs> Marisha is scrambling all this week to prepare just for next episode without Keelan. Although, here's the thing. I can see after everything's said and done, you know. Oh, Jester. Oh, do you want me to contact your family for you? Sending. She does the sending. Matt looks at Marisha. How does Keyleth respond? And Marisha has to, in the moment, switch from Poe to Keyleth and reply to Jester. Oh, man. And depending on how much contact she has with the council and Allura, she may already know who Jester is. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm assuming she at least has 
one degree. I'm assuming either I assume either Percy and or Vex are part of the council at this point. Yeah, for sure. So Alora tells the council about these people when she reveals the happy fun ball. Vex knows about this blue tiefling girl and what she's like. Yeah, she would tell her best friend. Well, no, Keyleth is on the council. You think Keyleth is too? Oh, for sure, okay. Keyleth is. Because Keyleth is the one that went around, and on her, in that year of downtime, she basically made all the connections between mm -hmm. all the true. Ashari and the communication devices. She basically, arguably, is the power behind the council. Okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I think Keyleth is directly involved. Like, Percy and Vexalia... Probably I, I, tangentially. I, I think those are the three that would end up on the council, if at all. I don't think Pike is on it. I don't. I, Grog's not on it. You know. But it also it might not be like Percy and Vex might not be on it at all, because the one who's actually in charge of Whitestone is Percy's sister. That's true. It's true. It could be Cassandra. So Cassandra would be the one on the council, not. That's true. Them. But it only matters that well, Keyleth unless has talked has Cassandra's running Whitestone and appoints Percy as the ambassador as the ambassador to the council. Yeah. Um, so that she can stay there in Whitestone. He already knows the council. You know. Yeah. Politically, that would be a better fit. I trust him. He's my brother. That's true. I can stay here and run things. He already knows them. That's knows true. who to watch out for, send him in. That's true. Um, I still, I, I do, okay. I have in my head a art piece that I really want to do. And I haven't gotten up the courage to try to do it. Okay. And maybe if I put it out there, someone, someone will do will, it for you. Yeah, the universe will give it to me. Um, and that is a picture, a dark room, a large bear, gray in the muzzle, and then, you know, in the face, not moving. A balding Percival, old, in his 60s, 50s, 60s, mm -hmm. and, a, and still fairly young, Vexalia. Crying into his shoulder, and him basically with the look, "I'm next for her." Mm. Uh, well, let's be honest, Trinket's gonna. Yeah. Well, Trinket would die first. Yeah. That's why I don't. Yeah. You know. And if and Trinket's like was like. 10 or 12. So he has another 20, maybe 30 years for a natural bear's lifespan, which would put him in about Percy 50 or 60 years old. Right. And Vexalia with another 150 years still to go. Yeah, that's when she moves in with the Ashari and uh, her and Keila. Because I've thought about tweeting at Laura and asking her what animal is would she summon next. Because mm. the ranger can just perform a ritual and get another animal. Yeah. Um, and so, but I haven't because, you know, who wants to think about that kind of thing? <laughs> uh, the internet. There's a huge chunk of the internet that wants to think about that. Uh, but yeah, so it's entirely possible that Allura has told Keyleth about the war that's happening in oh, Wild yeah. Mount and the group of adventurers that are a lot like they were that are part of the peace talks. Yeah. Um... So that when she does message Keyleth, or does cast sending, uh, 
Keyleth already knows. Um, well, but they asked Vila, Viridian, uh, if she could travel by plants. And she said that she could. Mm -hmm. So, in theory, they beat Vokodo, and she could take them to Vesra. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's yeah, that's how it starts. They go back with her, meet Keyleth. There's something going on that she can use these young adventurers for. I hadn't thought about that. I figured it would just be a boop. Hey, here's your mom. Okay, bye. And just teleport back. Mm. They tell Orly, okay, go back to Nicodronus. We're going to teleport out of here. Um, and hope that the giant with the dragon turtle doesn't get them on the way. Right. Uh, or that may be what keeps them from going. That could be part of their plan. She's already messaged the dragon turtle. Hey, you want stuff? It's this guy here with a ton of stuff. But the two monsters fight it out. So Ford's joke about taking it to Dark Toe, let them fight, may become reality. <laughs> I can see Jester coming up with that plan. Yeah. Well, what if we just tell the dragon turtle that there's more stuff here and you can have it? And... Yeah. I mean, I don't think... I don't think the community survives that. But, And I think that will be the argument that probably Caleb or Caduceus will bring up when she presents that plan. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm saying the plan is going to be presented. Fair. Uh, but Matt didn't seem to want that to go off. And I think he wanted the death to be the reveal. Because make a sleight of hand check. He failed it. Okay, it's now a dexterity check. Essentially initiative. Yeah. Uh... But he didn't ask the question that would have put an end to it. Where is your thousand gold worth of diamond dust? Yep. Because Caduceus hasn't bothered to state that he's buying it. Uh, and the last time Matt called him on it, they used the residuum. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they have any of that left. If they do, I'm pretty sure they don't have enough to meet that cost point. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, uh, question. They're, they're talking with her about the offering. They ask about the biggest piece, the, the greatest treasure. She mentions the pirates. And the gym. Which I immediately thought of Ashley's uh, narrative telephone okay. story. But I don't think that was the case. Yeah. But yeah, he's basically he basically described the equivalent of the Hope Diamond. Yeah. Uh, um Is one of those pirates either Vandrin and or Sabin? I know I've brought up Vandrin already with the retired, you know, on the island. Good works, good folks. Because they haven't met everyone in the village. No. They haven't met the miners yet. Right. And 
we talked, and I think that's where Vandron is. If he's on the island. If, yeah. Um, but Travis was certainly, at the end of the episode, who are these other people? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um. And we already we also have a connection with the class. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, a lot of weird, a lot of places. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about and why I think Vo was completely created from scratch. Okay. Uh, is the additional evidence this episode that Rumble Cusp is a confluence, is a nexus mm -hmm. of the planes. Um, and not just fire, water, and air, yeah. it's all of it. Uh, water they can breathe. Mm -hmm. The waterfall that goes up into the sky, mm -hmm. which we talked about already. But the fact that they can breathe the water without water breathing. Yeah. And Vo is, seems very much to me to be a earth and fire elemental. Mm. Uh, and because Ford did his divine sense, he knows it's not any of what the and Caleb's like elemental. Yeah. So that's why I say it's probably an elemental. Sorry. Um, Uh, and there are uh, methods which are mixed. Yeah, the law of the method is the earth fire. Yeah. Because when you first said that, I was about to say, oh, so you reskinned <laughs> and upgraded on the law of the method. Yeah, it, it would have been a major, major upgrade. Um, but this also might connect it to the ultimate sort of goal of the Ashari. Yeah. The Avatar. Um, yeah, so that is the one that is the one major strike against the Morkov is Ford would have divine sense detected aberration. Hmm. And the Morkov is an aberration, right? Because divine sense does uh, celestial, celestial fiends undead and aberrations, right? The Fae. Not I aberration. Thought, I thought Fae was only for the uh, ancients. No, they have turned the Faithless. Oh, okay. Their turn targets Fae. Okay, not aberration. Sorry. No. Um, but, yeah. And it fits in, if this was indeed Campaign 1 stuff, then sort of the ultimate step then is if, so if Keyleth had come and found her mother and defeated the Mork or this to de de defeated Vo then she becomes the avatar master of all four elements mm -hmm. where now her mother might be the one to do that and returns yeah. to Vesra as the master of all four elements uh, Very true. And that, and it's also possible that the original uh, village that had been there, mm -hmm. because from the stories we were given from all the villagers, it's been here a while. Yeah. Maybe it's an Ashari settlement originally. Yeah. And the Ashari are multi ethnic. Yes, very well said. Um, so that's not out of characteristic. Yeah. Um, so is that the long lost heart of Shari? <laughs> yeah. And if that is the case, then my idea about the guardian might mean that the Ashari village there mm -hmm. originally. Were, took on the guardianship of the gate. Yeah. 
uh, if that is where the if that is sort of the planar anchor point of Alexandria. Um, so what else? Who knows? But uh, I wanted to talk about the brilliant foreshadowing of the coming fight that Matt did. Mm. Uh, he foreshadowed layer actions. Yeah. Uh, control of the uh, torch, blooms. torch blooms. Uh, more than likely, it can target a creature or an area and do fire damage, basically boil them yeah. like it did with Knot. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was controlling the heat of the water. Uh, it's going to have multi-attack. Yep. Um, it has four eyes. It's going to have legendary actions. Oh, yeah. One of which will be an attack. And I think another one, which might take two legendary actions, is it straight up strips you of magic items. It targets one of your magic items. You have to make a save. Yeah. You fail, you don't have any more. So Bo was... and. Because because he, when it took the coins, he said it was yeah. pawn her bracers, and she was like, Ugh. so I think it's gonna be, it's gonna target armor and weapons yep. first. Um, and that might not be a legendary. That not, that might be an action. Yeah. That it takes. Yeah. Um. And it's possible that. Uh, or maybe a legendary action is the save for you to lose your memory. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, any any uh, speculations, predictions that we haven't gone over yet? Uh, no. Yeah, I, like I said, first half planning, unless they get interrupted by a bow. Second half. Either they decide they have what they need and go after him, or they decide they need something or someone and travel to part of the island to find that thing. I think... I don't think the planning session is going to take long. I think... Obviously, you haven't watched an episode where they try to plan something. Well, the reason I say it's not going to take long is because they already sort of had a plan. Sure. And... They don't want to come in through the front door where Vo's expecting. They're gonna want. They want to go to the waterfall, and they think that that's a secondary entrance because they were already asking about other entrances. Right. The waterfall makes the most sense. Okay. So I think that's where they're gonna go. Also, it kind of makes sense that that entering is verboten. Mm -hmm. That all of the people here tell all the visitors don't go there. Mm. Because what are stupid adventurers going to want to do? Go there. Right. So you go there, wipes your memory. Now you're part of the family. So I think that is, if it's not something that Vo does in the fight, going through the waterfall, that's the test. Mm. Is yep. can you retain your memory and get through here? Um, they may decide if Matt says, okay, you're not casting Greater Restoration unless you have the diamonds. Then they might go to the mine. Mm -hmm. And that's where they're going to be. I don't think there's anything on the island that they can get that's going to help them defeat Lakota. I think it's just, you go in, you smash face. Yeah. And win. Or die. Uh, and then I think the they may decide to leave the fighting Vokodo for a while and have her go back to the village and do some organizing of the people so that they can try to minimize civilian casualties if mm. something goes wrong. Yeah. While you do that, we're going to go to the waterfall and we're going to go to the ruins. We'll meet back. We'll yeah. come back. We'll touch base and then we'll go storm the castle. Which puts them really close up against the time, the date for TravelerCon. Yeah. But, yeah. 
But that's why I don't think it's going to be as much of the episode as you think. Fair enough. But, yeah. but we'll see on Thursday what happens. Uh, we'll see you guys. Later.